first player. And he chose Intel Sweep as the objective for, for Max Set. So we've already started the time, and we're down to rock placement. Now, anyone who has watched any of the, uh, the Armada Nationals video that we have on our channel uh, knows that Norm is really good at squadrons. And so he's brought... He's brought something, you know, he's brought a squadron contingent that's very popular amongst the Toronto area Imperial players, which is a bunch of swarm aces that that combine well with Sloan's ability to exhaust tokens. And uh, the the combination of Howlrunner, Dengar, Mauler Mythil, Saber Squadron, Suntir Fell. Uh, they're all designed to chew through. <laughs> they're all designed to chew through uh, enemy squadrons super quick, so that they can then start working on the opponent's ships with Admiral Sloan's ability. Now, the cool thing uh, about Max List, and it's actually something that uh, he's discussed, is that because Sloan is so popular in the Toronto area. Uh, the response has been to play a bunch of generic squadrons over specific aces. Because if there's one thing that Sloan is really good at, it's at uh, creaming scatter aces. Because you throw a bunch of dice with your flight controllers and your swarm rerolls, and you're uh, extremely likely to hit an accuracy. And because most of the swarm aces have very low HP pools, Often all it takes is like one attack to take out uh, a 17 point squadron. So uh, what Max thinking is, is that, well, if I just play a bunch of generic squadrons, then I'm going to basically make those accuracy results blanks. And they don't add any value to the attack. And the upside to that too is because generics are cheaper, he can play more of them. So that's the that's the thinking behind uh, Max Squadron contingent here. Intel Intel Sweep is a very interesting uh, in, interesting objective to play uh, because it's it's one of those objectives that because you a specific ship that ha is the it's it's a specific ship that you have to assign that picks up the objective tokens. If you're you're sort of um, announcing to your opponent where that ship is going to be. So you have to make sure that the ship is either nimble enough to dodge arcs or tanky enough to withstand a bunch of shots. And you don't necessarily need to collect three tokens. You just have to make sure that you collect more tokens than your opponent. So if you're able to collect even one token, but you can destroy your opponent's objective ship before they collect any, well, you're still going to get the 75 points at the end of the, at the, end of the game. So of course, Gladiator always a very good pick for uh, the objective ship for Intel Sweep. Gladiator used to be a lot better uh, with Intel Sweep when uh, the engine text was not a rata to so that you could actually move engine tech and then shoot with the Gladiator. So engine techs were a lot more common on Gladiator builds that had demolisher. You don't quite see that as much anymore. Uh, Norm ship does have engine text, so. That's probably the kind of ship that we're gonna. Sorry, that's probably gonna be the ship that we're gonna see him choose as his objective ship. So it's gonna be Architens for Norm, and it's our Akbar is gonna be the objective ship for Matt. So I was wrong. However, uh, the Architens actually has engine text on it too, which, which means that uh, because Architens the the speed one maneuver has a double tick, you can pull some really impressive. Uh, maneuvers with a with an architens with the engine text, and actually I was surprised because I never like when when I play architens I always I always leave them as bare bones as possible. I just put Captain Nita and TRC call it a day, and I never really play more than one. So it's gonna be interesting to see how uh, how Norm flies uh, architens with engine text. Well, and it's also interesting that they both chosen their capital ships to be the objective ships as well. That's true. I think it has to do with, uh, yeah, I'm not. May, maybe, uh, maybe the thinking behind that, at least for Mac, is that with the uh, 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why he chose his objective ship. Or sorry, well, I mean, he's not, not going to make it one of the transports. Well, he could have just made it the other uh, assault frigate, and why not make it a transport? Well, so the other assault frigate is the one he's more willing to have in the middle thick of things. Right? He's more willing to have the non-capital ship die right. first. So, the one he's going to be a little bit more defensive with makes sense. The one he keeps is the objective ship. And actually, Mac has a bit of an advantage here because he does have two VCX freighters, which do have the strategic keyword. Yeah which lets him move the objective tokens uh, when, the, when a VCX comes within distance one. The, the one thing I like about Imperial Squadrons is, <laughs> unlike Rebel Squadrons, most of the time where you deploy them doesn't really matter because they have such high speeds that you can reposition them fairly easily. Now, despite playing Akbar, uh, one thing I've noticed Mac likes doing with his assault frigates is instead of doing the uh, firing line going lateral to the or perpendicular to the opponent's approach, uh, he'll charge right in to the middle of an opponent to try to set up Akbar slashes and such. Norm placing on the third and last ship of his fleet. Quasar Fire with Hondo, Busicom, and Squall. Squall, the title being um, whenever you activate this ship, you get to uh, you get to move, I think it's up to three ships. I can't remember if it, they, they can't be heavy or if it's just any squadron. You get to move up to three squadrons that are not engaged, uh, distance one to two, and they can't end them engaged. So a really clever trick you can do with Squall is it does say that you can't end their movement engaged, so you can't use a the squall ability to uh, move a ship into engagement range with another squadron. But what you can do is if that squadron is close enough to a rock, you can actually move the squadron that you're using, activating with squall, you can move it into a rock within distance one of a ship. And because they're not engaged, because the line of sight between the two squadrons goes between a rock, uh, they're not engaged, so you can still do that, and you can still attack, albeit obstructed. So what you can do is, you activate Squall, you move the squadron into a rock at distance one of enemy's squadron, then you activate the squadron, you shoot, and then you move back away. So it's a way of like attacking and then fading. It's a really clever trick. I'm really hoping that Norm um, utilizes this trick against Mac if the opportunity presents itself. So Mac putting down his uh, his second uh, assault frigate that he's putting down is the Akbar ship, and now it's the delicate uh, question of how you're going to position it so you can get make use of those delicious side arcs. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, Mac doesn't like doesn't like running away from his opponents with his Akbar broadside ships. He instead uh, prefers to dive right into the middle of the fight. And I do think that that Mac does have the firepower advantage in this scenario, as well as the activation advantage. So he can use that that activation advantage to try to set up um, some really good shots against the, the Quasar. As I think, because the Quasar has the fewest amount of defense tokens, that's probably the easiest, that's probably going to be the easiest ship to take down. So with all the ships down, we go into the planning phase of round one. Uh, Max objective ship is ship number one, Akbar's flagship, and Norm's objective ship is also his number one ship, the Architan's command cruiser with Sloan on it. It looks like based on the, the deployment of those two ships, the three objective tokens on the left side of the board are going to be the ones that are going to be fought over for the intel sweep objective. Now it's also possible that uh, what Mackenzie can do is use some of his VCXs to draw the objective tokens on the right side of the screen towards the Akbar ship so that he can he can pick those up and get an advantage. And that's something that uh, Norm has, has to be aware of. And he can potentially counter this by uh, jumping, in the v jumping at the VCXs with his Sloan Aces. First activation by Norm here. His Architans. I'm gonna try to claim that first objective token. Yep. Uh, of course, he only claims it uh, when he reveals the dial and he's at distance one, so he's yep. gonna have to wait a turn. So what he's doing here, he did a nav command, 
So he's at speed three, and he's going to uh, use engine text most likely to do that extra one. Yep, extra one. And because the Architans has such a good has such a good uh, maneuver at speed one, the double tick, he can basically turn any direction that he wants. So he set himself up to pick up that token in the following turn, and he's also uh, set himself up so that, uh, depending on how fast Akbar's ship is going, he can catch it in the broadside and then fly away. So Mac has activated, I believe, one of his GR-75s. He's going to use it with the relay to activate the VCX, which is going to uh, pick up that token and move it. So you can pick up a token at distance one and then move it to at distance one of the ship. And uh, he did exactly what I predicted him to do, which is move it right next to the Akbar ship. So he's going to at least have Intel Suite parity going into round two. So that's the, that's the other VCX. Unfortunately, he, I think he misplaced his models in the middle of the tournament. So that's why that one looks a little bit different than the VCX on the right. But he uses that to reposition, and that's really good for him because that gave uh, repositioning the tokens gives him more control over uh, how he how he points his Akbar ship so that he doesn't have to maneuver it into a disadvantage position disadvantageous position in order to pick up the token. I believe he moved. Uh, I think he moved this one. I don't think he did. I'll check. Okay. He may have. He may have forgotten to move it. Okay, they just caught it. <laughs> yep. For for some reason, uh, for some reason, people who know how to play Armada, when they get on camera, they suddenly forget everything. Now the funny thing is, actually, Norm is known well for. Uh, <laughs> Uh, going to speed zero as much as he can, and it's a is a really cool tactic, is especially with um, with positional sensitive objectives like contested outpost and the like. Uh, going to speed zero means that your opponent has to speed up to to engage you, and it also means that, especially in the case of objectives like contested outpost, uh, the the turn that the engagement actually happens is longer because. Your opponent is closing the distance with you, but you're not closing the distance with them. Yeah. So it takes them longer to get to you, and then you can use that time to, uh, you know, uh, get a better sense of their approach. You can even uh, pressure an opponent into rushing towards you, which may not be the ideal si situation for them. And it allows you more turns to farm more tokens. So uh, because Norm is the aggressor in this situation, I don't think we're going to see that. Now, do you think that Mac is going to... Like, Mac looks well-positioned here to collect all of the objective tokens. I, I, it's going to be a challenge for Norm to get to three first, I think. Norm, uh, Norm might just concede the objective to him, yeah. like right now, and just assume that he's going to get the 75 points, and then Norm is going to have to work it back somehow by, by just killing, killing as many of his squadrons as he can, and maybe some of the flotillas. So this is now the uh, now Squall is activating and he's using the ability to move his unengaged squadrons up to distance two. Norm just checking the flak range of the assault frigates. What what Norm might be looking to do is yeah, I think he's just checking arc here to make sure that he stays yep. in one or the other. Not only is he checking arc, but what he might want to do is uh, surround that that objective token so that if the VCX does try to come in and use strategic he'll he'll punish him for it by killing it in response Norm getting aggressive on turn one I like this I believe this is Hal Runner activating and of course when you're t when you're activating a bunch of Imperial squadrons and Hal Runner is one of them you always want to use her first so that any subsequent squadron that jumps in gets the that's a lot of accuracies. Yeah. And, and like I was saying earlier, um, a good counter to play, playing against the Sloan list is you just bring squadrons that don't have any defense tokens. Right? 
you can see how deliberate Norm is being here, looking at the arcs for both of those ships, making sure he's not going to take any more attacks than he needs to. PT-106 says VCX can still pick up and reposition top right token next round. Uh, that would be true, but now that Norm, Norm has... Norm has engaged with VCX, so if, if Mac wants to pick up the top right token, he's going to have to move his Hawk into uh, distance one and intel all the uh, squadrons that are engaging the VCX. I think this is Suntir Fell that's attacking. So that's four plus one for Hellrunner, Swarm reroll. It looks like that's three damage on the VCX. Of course, it's always good practice when you're uh, adjusting damage on squadrons is you either mark the squadron or what you do is you make sure that you check engagement before you pick up the squadron. This is, a this is now a regular interceptor attacking. One damage. So now I'm just inching forward with Squall as well here. Dengar was the last squadron he moved up, right? Yeah, I moved him into the asteroid. That's good. It's a, he just needs to be within distance one to two of uh, the ships to make use of his counter aura. And that means that uh, Suntir Fell and the Interceptor are all going to be at least counter three counter attacks. Speed three, wow. So, what are you going to do here? Okay. I was like, how long is he going to go before he forgets to pick up the objective token? He's trying to he's since trying he since he hadn't actually taken any of his action yet. Yeah, it's okay. But he's got to remember when he reveals that dial to pick up the token. I said he's trying to set up the Akbar slash. So with the new objective counters we have in the overlay now, whoever has the advantage will have the points reflected right away. It'll go back and forth as those objective tokens are collected. So right. he's up now, but I suspect the arc will. Uh, Activate and take it back next turn, probably before the Akbar does. This, the Akbar slash is tricky because Norm is Norm is the first player next turn, which means that, uh, especially with engine text, it's going to be very easy for him to try to get into the front arc of that that a suffragette, which is exactly where you want to be against an Akbar ship. Here's a nav command. So nav command with the assault frigate. Flat guns, one damage to the interceptor. No damage, and then how runner, miss. Just one out of that. I think he's setting up a maneuver to try to envelope the both the quasar and the gladiator between the two assault frigates to create a crossfire. So with the nav command, that gives him an extra tick on joint number two. And that allows him to do that, um, I think they call it a dog leg, a dog leg maneuver. And what that means is, uh, I believe even at speed one, that Quasar will end up in the side arc of the, the Assault Frigate. And that's very nice because, again, so uh, uh, Mac has They removed the marker, damage. but they didn't put the squadron back? Oh man. So <laughs> Mac is apparently feeling feeling a little nervous being on stream here. Yeah. No, he's just he's just scattered brain. I, they say that G, uh, genius and insanity go hand in hand. Yeah. Now it's funny cuz Mac said he really wanted to win this regional because he wanted to uh, 
I think he said the reason he wanted to win this regional because he's actually flying out to Los Angeles yeah. next week to take part in the South Car- uh, California regional okay. uh, next weekend. Yeah. So he wanted to win this regional so that he wouldn't have to play a serious list when he went out to, to California to play against uh, play with his other friends. We're going to need to play seriously at one of them. Yes. I'm not sure this is the one. That looks like a squadron command. Takes the token on the GR-75. I, I just want to point out that, I mean, we're seeing we're seeing some sloppy play here, but... Um, not that sloppy, but... Well, I, I also want to say that it's, at this point, I think players have been playing Armada for about six hours. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> these are also two players who've played against each other yeah. a lot of games. Uh... I, I want to point out just how many range rulers Norm has just sitting around on the table. Oh, those are those are the range rulers he got, I believe, for winning Gen Con, I think. And so they're they're a range ruler for every possible no, no, I know. like distance. Well, he just he's got, he's got two for every distance. We're now in the squadron phase, and now he's going to check for. I wonder why he's checking that. Yeah, I wonder why. Uh, uh, specifically, why he's checking the ruler for that? Or sorry, they're using. I, he just wants to decide where to put his ships, whether they put them in range or out of range. Well, if he's checking for flak, right, he'd want to use the medium range ruler. But I guess he's also checking to see uh, how far away he can move his ships and still activate them with the quasar, which does have boosted comms on it. So that's Jendon. Yep. Jen and Mahler both hiding in the rock. Uh, and Norm just telling Mac that they are positioned so that they are fully covered by the rock. So that means that there's no possibility of them being engaged by Mac's squadrons. Of course, even at even at speed 5, I don't think that the A-wings are fast enough to actually engage any of uh, Norm's rear squadrons. But he'll probably move them in to engage... The squadrons that are next to Max, the salt frigate number two. Mac was telling me earlier that he actually attended Gen Con 2015, which was the first Gen Con tournament after the release of the Star Wars Armada. And as most of you probably know, uh, Jonathan Rennig won the first Armada Worlds using a, a list that had two assault frigates, one corvette, commander was... Garm Bell Iblis and ran eight A-Wings. And that list was very good against uh, what was considered to be the strongest list at the time, which was the Gen Con Special, which was one uh, Victory Star Destroyer 1 and three Gladiators, one of which was a Demolisher, all with assault concussion missiles, I think, and Screed was a command. But that list didn't run any squadrons. So well, that was back before, that was back when it was still 300 point fleets. Yes. Yeah, and so Mac was telling me that he brought a very similar list to Gen Con, except that he was saying that he was playing a bunch of uh, lists that had a, were also squadron-heavy lists. Yeah. And uh, he said that if he, if he managed to play against more Gen Con specials than he did, he probably would have placed very well in that turn. Uh, the Quasar is in a bit of hot water because it looks like it's, it's in the arc of both those assault frigates, the side arc. It's still moving real slow, though. Well, it, it is, but they're, it's in range already. Right. And the thing about the Quasar is, I think, even if, no matter what Norm does, he's still going to stay in the, front, or in the side arc of both those ships. Now, the one thing going for Norm is that uh, Mac actually doesn't Aside from the turbo laser reroute circuits, he doesn't have any additional uh, luck mitigation on his dice. Yep. And turbo laser reroute circuits isn't something that you normally see on a a self frigate, simply because uh, they tend to be more popular on ships that have multiple evade tokens, because you do need to exhaust or spend uh, an evade token to use it. Yep. Um, But Max swears by them. What Max's doing here is that he's. He's creating a screen around his Akbar ship so that when Norm moves his squadrons in, they're forced to attack the A-wings instead of the 
a self raise. Now Norm can counter this by moving his Dengar into the middle of that A-wing screen and giving them all heavy. However, that exposes his Dengar to counterattack by the A-wings. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how this next round is going to play out. Um, well, what Mac is going to do? Uh, Norm's going to activate first. Now, Norm, Norm is probably going to activate either the Architons or the Gladiator. Of course, I could be wrong. But you or, 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 or the Quasar. I mean, the, those are all three ships, but that's... The, 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 Quasar, the, the Quasar is going to be in arc whether he activates it first or last. Yeah, no, but I don't the, think he's activating but the, the What the Demolisher can do is it can activate and move in the front arc of the Akbar ship. Yeah. Thus preventing it from being counterattacked by Akbar Cyber. And he's measuring it now. He sees that um, actually Mac has set this crossfire up perfectly. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I really like this style of aggressive uh, Akbar assault frigate play. As I was saying earlier, almost every assault frigate I see people play when, especially when Akbar is involved, they're always flying perpendicular to the opponent's approach and they're running away. Right. And that doesn't create a lot of really good opportunities for crossfire. Like, kiting is great, but. Mm, this has a this has a much uh, a potential for a higher return. So demo, as I suspected, he's going to try to get into the front arc of that uh, self forget. And PT106 agrees with me when he says the weak point of the Quasar Stronghold build is ships. So after moving, he takes a side arc shot for black dice using those very good, uh, those very sweet uh, Worlds 2016 gold black dice. That looked like, it looked like he got five hits there. Five hits there, right? Yeah. And Coolant discharges the, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Coolant Discharge is a critical that says uh, only one attack that that ship makes can attack a ship. So now he can't shoot at something from his left arc and his right arc. So he has to either choose the Architons or one of the ships in his right arc. Yeah, and now... Now this is where this is where actually the uh, yeah this is actually where the engine text is really going to come into play. So yeah. Max, that, that one A wing marker they just took away, he's putting it he's putting it right in front of the gladiator, so it will get bumped again. Yep. So he'll he's not going to place it until after the move. Mac will get to place those two A-wings wherever he wants around the Gladiator. So that's a pretty good maneuver by Norm to not be subject to a side arc uh, from that Gladiator. The further, sorry, from the Assault Frigate. The Assault Frigate, I think, was going speed three last turn, so he can get around uh, the Gladiator without much problem. But that does take him uh, out, of, out of the battle a bit. So here's a squadron activation from GR75 number 4. And the A-wings are going to start to go to work on the desk, or sorry, the demolisher. One damage. So Z-wings coming into range. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough room to squeeze it in there. <laughs> Max starting to play a little bit more carefully now. Ooh, he's engaged with Merrick. That's smart, though. You're taking out Merrick. Merrick. 
Mer Merrick is like the scariest bomber in all of Armada. Yes. However, the the beauty of the Z95 dice is that they're yes, they are fickle, but we call them in Toronto. We call them casino dice because you can hit the jackpot just randomly, just rolling double hit, double hit, hit five damage with just a Z95. A wing just going in there to tie up those squadrons. Mahler Mythel and Mahler Mythel is still in the rock, so he's not engaged with anything, which means he can move out of that rock and. Uh, potentially zap three of those squadrons that are right next to him. Right, I think he can hit more than three. The one's on the other side of the gladiator. Well, if he goes between these two, he has to be engaged with the squadron. Okay. So if, if the line of sight goes through he the just ship... he goes right behind the gladiator, though... If he goes Z here. and like four A wings, it it would as long as he had line of sight to this yeah. A wing, the one next to. I, I think he can position himself so yeah. he has line of sight in all five ships or five uh, squadrons. Mac is uh, Mac is uh, learning about how squall works. I think what he was trying to do was that he was trying to move the A wing into and engage those four four of Norm squadrons in the bottom. I think because he thought that. Uh, he thought that Squall didn't work on a squadron that was within distance one of an enemy squadron. But all that matters is that it's unengaged, which is what being in Iraq does. Uh, you were talking about trying to get four squadrons in. Now, the beauty of what he might do here with the Squall activation is because, remember, uh, as I was saying at the beginning of this, uh, this game, one of the tricks you can do is have a guy in Iraq, have him move. Well, actually, no, sorry. You can't do that with... Just forget what I, forget what I was going to say. Um, I was going to say something that you absolutely cannot do with Squall, having to do with moving Mahler twice. Oh, face down. Face down. Oh, my God. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's perfect. So his first Squall movement is Colonel Jendon. And I think that was his only uh, Squall activation. Looks like one of his, his his first activation is going to be either uh, Suter Fell or the Interceptor. I think the Interceptor is just out of long range for boosted comps, so he's gonna he's gonna use his Interceptor to shoot at the Hawk. Swarm reroll, three hits, and I was mistaken. It was actually the VCX, which actually I think is the better target. That was Suter Fell. Taking the VCX is is big because that that cut that cut his uh, GR75 squadron activations in half. The GR75s so number four and number three are on the opposite side of the board, so they wouldn't be within normal activation range. They're relying on the VCXs to activate his squadrons. Mahler Mithil just moved in. Z95 died. VCX died. Dengar activating now. Dengar flying, making sure that now that now that the squadron situation has been contained on the right side of the board, Dengar is not going to offer his. Now is going to offer his counter and intel services uh, on the other squadron fight that's happening on the left side. Dengar shooting at the A wing. Swarm. Looks like he gets one hit and two hits in return, which Dengar will scatter. Yeah, fourth activation is Merrick now. Yeah. So he'll shoot at the A wing uh, that already took damage, and it, it it hadn't activated yet, so it was opportunity to remove it from the thing. Yeah. Counterattack dealt one damage to Merrick. 
So now, now that Merrick has, and because Merrick has grit, uh, because he was only engaged with one A-wing, it allowed him to run to the station, get a cup of coffee, heal himself the damage. Oh, it's, one, uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why I really like watching Norm play is that he, like the way he plays squadrons, like just gets every little yeah, every little drop, ounce, uh, drop of value out of out of his activations. He knows exactly where to position his guys, which attacks are going to make the most uh, activations. I've learned a lot from watching Norm play um, his squadrons. I, I'm just happy I called the Mahler positioning. <laughs> It feels good whenever I don't get something right. It doesn't happen very often. No. Mac, Mac reveals his uh, self frigate number two with the engineering command. And he also declares that he's using uh, the disposal capacitors. So he's going to be uh, using that for the shot. So with Akbar, that's five red dice, one blue dice on the Quasar. Was he, no, he's using Akbar. He's, using, he's not using Akbar. He's using this. No, he's using Akbar. Oh, using Akbar's ability, sorry. Yes. Oh, you're saying shooting with Akbar. So, side to front. It looks like he got two accuracies. And. Wow. Three. Two accuracies. He also had TRC. But wait, that's how close to that edge that I climbed. And. Uh, Two hull points, crazy. So all of a sudden, it looks like, um, yeah. All, all of a sudden, it looks like the Norm's Quasar might not even survive to the end of the turn. Now Mac trying to uh, trying to pile on the damage here by. Hoping to bump, but I don't think he quite bumps there. I was mistaken, he actually does bump. So he walks it back, and both Norm's Quasar and Max AF takes uh, one face down. Norm's last ship is Sloan's Architons. So now I think he's trying to see if he can uh, attack long range into the front arc of the Akbar ship, which is also has been has been uh, attacked by Demo earlier in the turn. Gets a good hit, rolls dual turbo to uh, change that blank into a one critical, so it's like four damage. <laughs> And also remembers to <laughs> also remembers to pick up the objective token. So now, uh, for the time being, for the time being, yes, both they're both at one objective. Yeah. I think I think one of the objective tokens is sitting under. That's correct. The Akbar ship, right in the back. So when Mac when Mac activates his ship, if he remembers to pick it up, then he'll be in the lead again. Mac was saying, wait, that's the wrong side of the Architons, because most people who play Architons, they play the Black Dice version, but this is indeed the command version that uh, has an extra squadron command and has blue dice. So Norm doing a nav command, she's giving him an extra tick on the second joint. And we may see an engine text here. And yeah, and then he's going to engine tech and uh, turn in to uh, attack the rear. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was that uh, the Architons actually has Admiral Montferrat on it too, so all shots are that are going to be shot at him because he's going at speed 3 are going to be uh, obstructed. Mac is checking to see if he can uh, move his gold squadron within bombing range of the Quasar. 
and what's letting him do that is would be the hawk that's making all the imperial squadrons next to it heavy max lamenting the uh the coolant discharge oh yeah. uh yeah critical it's preventing him from attacking twice Still, if I was in max, max position, I would just take the one shot and try to get rid of the Quasar before it has a chance to activate again next turn. Now, the unfortunate thing uh, with Norm's ship, the Demolisher, is that it's... Uh, Mac looks to be overlapping the station, so if he rams the Demolisher, he's going to be able to heal the damage he's going to get from overlapping the demo, because he also overlaps the station. Sure. But I think Mac would, or sorry, Norm would be okay with getting a double art shark at the beginning of his turn. Of course, because I mean, you take out Akbar, that's that's a vast majority of his firepower gone straight away. Here's the Akbar shot with decaps. What? Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not sure why you flipped the dice there, but I don't think it matters. The Quasar is dead. This is going to be awkward. That does. Let us get rid of the uh, awkward decision next turn about getting a, an activation out of Squall before yep. his other... But here's the problem. So, like, you look at the field of rocks that are behind the Demolisher. Like, where's he going to go? And then you, you still have the problem of not getting double arced by uh, Norm's Demolisher as well. PT106 uh, says, wow, no shot to Architans. Uh, earlier in the turn, Max... Uh, Akbar ship suffered the coolant discharge critical, which only allows him to shoot at a ship. Like, only one attack of his can, yeah, shoot uh, at a ship. So he chose to finish off the Architans for his one shot. So, uh, crit there was life support tokens. Oh man, he landed on both obstacles. And I think he's still in dual arc of the gladiator. Or more importantly, he's still going to take that, that side arc from the gladiator. I think Norm's checking there if his side is actually able to go into the side. It looks like it, it looks like it has side to side. Thing. Merrick takes another damage, she spends a brace. Two more damage to Merrick. Do you know what the crit was that Akbar received? Yeah. Uh, when you the rock? I, I, call, I announced it. Uh, let me... Uh, Do you remember what the effect was? No, no, I, just, I can't remember what it was. Oh, life support failure. It's the command token one, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I knew I saw as soon as I saw a list I would remember what it was, but so VCX is moving that token. All all Norm needs to do is take out the Akbar. Yeah, if Akbar dies, yeah. I mean he still has to swing the Arcaton around to collect one of them. I don't think I don't think he's gonna get both. Yeah. I mean they do have four rounds left, but the, the other thing is though, like it's Norm does win. But the margin of victory is, would be such that I believe he'd only get a 7-4 or a 6-5. I think it's a 7-4.
if, if the only thing that went down before now and the end of the game was the uh, Akbar frigate. Mac definitely feeling the hurts. Mac just asking which squadrons of his have activated. So squadron two. First one's going to be gold squadron. Uh, jumping over to perhaps intercept the architects as it approaches. And then second activation is going to be the hawk. And they're checking relay. Yep. One blue die against. The question that uh, came up at the table was, can a squadron with snipe shoot at a target at distance two if it's engaged with a target at distance one? The answer is yes, assuming that none of the engaged squadrons are, are or have escort. It's a little bit of confusion about uh, which side it should be. Yeah, which side it should be on. I, I definitely feel the. I don't think he's activated yet. No, I definitely feel the weight of the weight as the day goes on. Um, you just start. You just start getting like this fog. <laughs> All these little things you have to keep track of. I got a wing is done. So Jenna uses activation to hit that snipe again. Snipe is so uh, so great. Saber, Saber Squadron. In many cases, the only interceptor that I play in a lot of my lists. This is a regular interceptor. And it looks like that's everything going should to be blue. They're just now changing it to a different color. They're going into turn four now or turn five? Turn three. The big question now is whether Ad Akbar dies. It was determined last round after Akbar moved that it was yeah. double arc. So, oh, yeah, this is what he's doing. He's doing his side arc with demo. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it looks like there was a crit there. APT, dead Akbar. Huge coup for Norm here. No one, no one flies a demo quite like Norm. I have to say. So here's a second shot. He's going to take the second shot without, a, without even moving here. Uh, try to shoot the flotilla. Removes a black die because he's fishing for accuracies, but he didn't get any, so he got scattered. And I think what he's going to try to do... Actually, do you know if he took any damage cards on the demo yet? No. no nothing shot at him. Right? Uh, the Akbar... Or no. Nope. No, it was just a squadron so I've been shooting at him. Uh, a couple of them. Maybe a couple of them. I don't know. It might have one. 
Now, there's a couple a couple of things at play for this maneuver. He can ram the flotilla um, twice, or well, I think what he really wants to do though is he wants to just simply get out of the side arc of the assault uh, frigate. However, yeah. Akbar's gone now, which means that that assault frigate is only rolling three red dice. The decaps is already spent. So it's not even that scary anymore. So it looks like So I think I think actually what he did there was like a speed two maneuver and then he because he wanted to intentionally ram and then yeah. end up and he's like yeah. And now that uh, the GR75 number three has two damage cards on it. So the, the question they were asking on, on the table was, if he rams the demo, he takes the third damage card. Yes. But because he also ends up on the station, does he die or does he heal the damage card before he dies? And the answer is that it dies as soon as he takes the third damage card. Mac activating number four with the squadron command. Doesn't, doesn't look like there was any damage there. Counter one because of Dengar. No, wait, he did, oh, he did oh, he die. Did it. And that was Merrick still, was it? Uh, yes, it was Merrick. Okay. And despite losing Akbar, Mac's keeping this close. We gotta remember, we still have the 75 points for Intel Sweep. On Max side. Well, you've included that already. Yeah, I know. So if if Norm is able to pick up one more objective token, that 75 points go away. So it, it, it looks like I think the Interceptor died. Gets a counter three attack. Swarm reroll. Puts three on the VCX. VCX. This is turn three now, which means that if if Norm wants to pick up the objective token, he's gonna have to race his his Architons all the way to the left side of the sorry the right side of the board where uh, that objective token is sitting right behind the number five GR seventy five. And Mac uh, does a retreat with his VCX. I think he wants to he wants to save it so that he can start kiting away that objective token, denying it to Norm. Centicore reveals a squadron command. And because of Jendon, he gets to relay two here. No, mine's worth two more points. Mahler Mithil using his ability, Dengar providing the heavy, or sorry, the intel rather. Yeah. Dead A wing. Counter. Scatter. I was like, I was over so it's very likely that that Max uh, number three flotilla will die. And I think he got an accuracy there with he the did. yeah. Oh, double, double hit! Hits. Made him re-roll the hit. Yeah. I lost. Oh my god. I, I, I don't know if we're well, no, no, is it easy yet? Oh, yeah, never mind. Yeah. 
Norm racing towards that objective token. <laughs> Flotilla uh, kills poor, himself. Yeah. Brave suicide. Uh, Flotilla. For, uh, Flotilla. Wow. <laughs> I think he's trying to figure out if he can actually. Oh no, uh, he's still got a squadron command. Gold squadron finally doing some uh, anti ship attacks here. Two damage. Redirect it back to the back hole. The back uh, zone. Er, er. Hole zone is the right word. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be very hard for for Max Salfrida to actually contribute anything else to this fight. And what Norm just needs to do here is make sure that VCX goes down. It's going to be a little difficult unless uh, Norm has been dialing in, unless Norm has been dialing in um, squadron commands on his gladiator as well. With the Quasar going down, he's lost a lot of his uh, his, uh, his squadron pushing. Yeah. But what Matt can do is just concentrate on trying to pelt, pelt the uh, the squadrons that Norm has with his uh, ship plan. <laughs> Looks like Howl Runner's the only thing in the ship flak range. One hit. Is it? Use the scatter. No, it just, yeah, just takes it. I guess the, the scatter was already spent. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, it might have been spent, but. Yeah. That was, what was that second one? Mauler Mythil? Uh, no. Uh, the bottom one? Jenin? Yes, Jenin. When, when, when the squadrons aren't painted, it's harder to see. Banging a squadron token. How many? How many squadrons does Matt have left? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. I guess I could have just looked at this. You can look at the numbers. That's fine. <laughs> I made a big fancy overlay for you. Yeah. Landing on the debris field. Yeah, why not? I mean, at this point, you got to take uh, you got to take some risks. You got to. You, you, get, you have to bring as much anti-squadron firepower as, to bear as you can. Yes. Saber squadron with a snipe. Oh, no snipe. No, just the... Just, yeah. Can't snipe, just give it the one. One more A wing. And then Jendin's gonna use Saber to snipe again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, not. Norm's roll. Norm's uh, Saber Squadron roll has been anemic this turn. Oh, wow. Nice. But he does get a counterattack. Counter two. All right. They trade uh, an A Wing and Saber Squadron. <laughs> right now, Norm is winning seven four. If he can, if he can take the uh, objective away from, if he can take the objective away from Mac. I think that he can push that to possibly an eight three. Oh, 
was like, all right, guys, I have this many points left. What squad are you doing? We're all in ties. And then we push in a lot of squads. This, uh, this game is all about the squadrons now, I think. Yeah. And, and simply whether or not uh, the Architons can make it to that objective token in time. Next turn is turn four. Even with engine text, he's not going to be able to get close enough, I think. So if he does pick up the token, it's going to be on turn six. Trying to decide whether to. I don't think he wants to come uh, down towards the assault target, so I think he's going to the one on the far right rather than the one in the middle of all the squadrons. So PT106 said, uh, asked which token he should go after. And that's actually a good point. I mean, it's true, the assault, the assault frigate is waiting for him, but Akbar's gone. And if he keeps his range, he's only shooting three red dice. True. Now, he does have turbo laser reroute circuits, which means that it's going to do some damage at least. Um, but if he stays at, at long range, he can just cancel the double hit. And I mean, if he keeps moving at speed three, it's taking away a die. All right, going to this turn four here. Thank you, everyone, for who's joining us today on uh, on the stream. We appreciate everyone coming out to watch. Um, so it's rare that we we have the opportunity to provide Armada content. I wish we could provide more of it. I hope we do in the future. Uh, what with store championship season coming after May, uh, with Wave Seven, I think interest in playing Armada yeah. locally has rekindled a little bit so maybe we'll see more attendance for some of the monthly events that we sure. hold here and of course there's nationals yes we're going to try to bring some uh, some games from nationals yeah. if we're trying to work out uh, a solution where we can get as much content from as many of the games as possible but uh, we know how popular the uh, the Canadian Nationals finals have been historically on our channel, so we do want to at least record it, if not do a live stream. Of yeah, it. I think we're going to try. Oh, that VCX is done. We're going to try to run two streams through the uh, through Nationals, March 16th to 18th. Uh, hopefully, that will mean we'll be bringing the at least the cut from uh, Armada. Right. Now with that VCX down, I think uh, it's. It's just a question of which which token Norm wants to go after. I, mean, I think he just plays safe. Yeah, you just go in a straight line, right? Yeah. Now, there, there is something to be said about potentially increasing your chance of getting a higher MOV by turning south and maybe trying to take out the flotillas with your architects. So Mogrek's just asking about uh, the, uh, the round schedule for nationals. Okay. The schedule uh, is going to be four rounds on day one, and then it's a cut to top four on day two. And that's going to be a fixed schedule to, uh, regardless of the number of players that show up. But we're hoping we can uh, max, max out the Armada turnout. Um, potentially some room for some additional tables if uh, we sell out the tickets we have up now. Yeah, as we were, were saying earlier today, we were actually quite surprised by the turnout because I think for today, we, uh, we didn't sell out until I think about maybe 12 hours before, before the event started. We Some had 29, well, no, I don't know if we had 29. We, we had 23 tickets sold last night okay. and then we had 29 registrants this morning. Of course, three of them didn't show up, which was a bit of a boon for us because I don't think we could have fit them otherwise. I think Mackenzie's priority now is just to uh, 
stem the bleeding of points. And I think that's what he's going to do. He's just going to run far away. <laughs> Squadron oh, yeah. activation with the gladiator. I feel like Dengar, I think Dengar is at 1 HP. I think you just run to the station. No. Although I guess he has his scatter. Oh yeah. And that kills the uh, hawk. He gets counter two, one, and then uh, scatter. Yep. Norm really wants those extra MOV. Here's a relay, and I think this is I think this is just a generic interceptor. No, it's not. It is. Center felt. Howard? Oh, Howard, yes. No, it couldn't have been Howard, it was five dice attack. So it must have been it must have been Center Felt. So <laughs> Max is jumping the gun, but Norm still oh. has to move his ship. No uh, no rear arc that A wing? No, I guess he missed it. It's one of the few times I've seen uh, yep. Norm, Norm uh, miss an opportunity. But he does flack the A wing on the side. No, he's gonna fly the. Or say not the A wing, the gold squadron. Right. So 34 Gingerbread asks if Gar Saxon has a place in the Sloan build. I personally don't think so, simply because Gar Saxon has Rogue. And so Rogue doesn't benefit, uh, like Sloan doesn't uh, do anything for Rogue ships. I think both the generic Gauntlet Fighter and Gar Sexton himself both have Rogue. As, as a way of countering, like I can see an argument being made for Gar Saxon if you're going to put him in Sloan, just so that you can mitigate the activation, the squadron activations of an opposing uh, squadron heavy list. So I can see an argument for that, but I think the problem with Raid is that so many people run comms nets and hondos that it's, it's Raid is just not that effective right now. So Mac has a couple squadron activations left here. Both squadrons gonna go try to heal. Make it a little harder to finish them off. Anyone is gonna try to prevent anyone from coming and uh, killing off that transport. I think that's more just to ensure that if anyone goes after the A-wing, he'll shoot. Uh, he'll he'll get to shoot at it with the the flotilla's flag. Sure, but I mean, he can, he's gonna run away with them. Yeah. Oh, so they uh, just realized that they, uh, Norm should have activated first, so uh, he would have come over and locked down Gold Squadron. Right, right, okay. Gold Squadron took a shot, no damage. All right, going into dials for round five now. So does Norm get within range this turn? You think Norm? Yeah. He will. He, I I believe he will. He just has to do a nav command just to seal the deal. But I think traveling at speed three, even without a nav command, he's going to be able to get within distance one. And then start a turn six. He just activates, picks it up. The, the only uh, the only thing that would prevent him from doing so if somehow uh, this turn took 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling if this turn took 20 minutes, that might be a, a tournament infraction. Yeah. 
So this is Demo uh, doing his flat shot. He takes one, two. Yeah, he he got he had the gold squadron double arced, and so yeah. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't have a squadron. You surprised he didn't have a squadron activation? It, it, well, because he had to program the dial one turn in advance, he may not have thought that anything would be close enough. But I mean, like, I, I think this, yeah. these turns were relatively clear a few turns back, so. Oh, also not a squadron activation. Oh, he needs the navigation. Just speeding through here, the last few actions in turn. Did a bump. Uh, the transport. Oh. Miss, misses the gold squadron. Mahler comes over and finishes off. I, I gotta say, I'm impressed with what Norm was able to do with uh, with only three activations. I think the paradigm for so long in Toronto has been two things. Number one, uh, <laughs> as many activations as possible, and number two, you you bid like a crazy person. So super low bids and super high activations and. Norm had a respectable bid at 12 points, which is why he got first player. But at the same time, uh, only doing three activations, and none of them were like a big ship. No. It's, it's quite surprising, actually. And he, lo he lost the Quasar pretty quick. Yeah. That was a lot of his squadron activations that went away. Yeah. So there, there's the uh, equalizing Intel sweep. Intel sweep. So that's the 75 points gone off max side. Now he's got some squadron activations. Yeah. We're just all going to heal. PT-106 says one can allow for a low activation fleet in it if it goes first. That's true. I, I agree with you 100%. It's just that around Toronto, uh, I mean, I want to say that we're greedy in that we want to have more activations than our opponent and go first at the same time. And I think one of the reasons why Norm may have just decided to... Oh, yeah, one of the reasons why Norm may have decided to go with a low activation list uh, without the and, and the first players, the existence of Governor Price and Bail Organa means that if you try to activation pad, it is possible that your opponent just uh, Governor Prices you. And, you know, maybe you don't want to bid a ridiculous amount for first player because Bail Organa is now in the game. And PT-106 follows up by saying that the Quasar is a sacrificial lamb here. Uh, very true, because that is the, the, the least dense in terms of points that, that he loaded up uh, on his ship. And generally, generally after the first couple of squadron activations, you don't need a ship that has squadron four anymore. Because uh, what happens is then 
your Centacor either picks up the slack, the Demolisher and the Centacor both have Squadron 2, so they can command a respectable amount of units, and, a lot, and you've lost a, a lot in the um, initial attrition that uh, you don't necessarily need that ship around anymore. So I think PT-106 hit the nail on